Via is a system of Eurorack modules built on a shared hardware platform. Each module is designed around a concept for animating the platform's core analog circuit. Today we're going to explore the core circuit with the help of a set of demonstration modules. They break out the internal circuit blocks, allowing us to see the signal routing as a patch. External signals enter the circuit through two inputs, here labeled A and B. A manual control for each input allows you to set a voltage from negative 5 volts to 5 volts when no external source is connected. When the A channel is patched, the A manual control is disconnected, but the B control serves as an attenuverter on the input. The inputs then pass through a pair of track and holds. These are controlled by VIA's internal function generator, and they allow you to hold sampled voltages without digitizing the signal. Each channel also features an analog VCA stage. The VCA control signals are generated by a pair of digital to analog converters. These are the heart of the module. They can be used conventionally to control the amplitude of external sources, or more unconventionally to control the level of DC voltages. This serves to pass the control signal through the VCA to the output. The two channels are then mixed to create VIA's main output. We'll now patch up the signal flow that we just described. The next three patches will bring these blocks to life using Meta's crossfade control scheme as an example. If this is a little deeper than you want to go right away, you can skip to the next videos in the series for more traditional top-down explanations of each module. As we connect the VCA control signals, notice how the inputs are faded in and out alternately to create a crossfading effect. In this case, you're hearing a crossfade between a noise source and a square wave LFO, creating a dynamic excitation signal for rings. We can use the controls on the VIA to adjust the timing of the crossfade. As the crossfade control signal approaches the frequency of the LFO, perceptually everything seems to blend together into one complex signal. With nothing patched into the inputs, the module fades back and forth between DC voltages. This causes the crossfade control signal to appear at the output, and its range is bounded by the inputs. We've patched that to the frequency input of rings, and we're adding some drums from the DAW. The manual controls now allow us to set the bass frequency as well as the direction and the scale of the modulation. The track and hold stages allow us to change the interaction between the VCA control signals and the module's inputs. As we engage the track and holds, notice how the module freezes the input and uses it to create a fixed destination rather than fading it in and out. The synchronized control of the VCAs in the sample and holds creates a slowly evolving modulation signal. This gives us an idea of how these basic circuit blocks can be animated to create a musically useful path between the two inputs and the output. You can check out the link in the description of this video to get some general info about the programmable UI features. We'll now narrow our scope and look at each of the modules independently. Hopefully this video will give you some extra insight whenever we talk about the analog core.